Welcome to Vault Heads, the show where we chronicle the great Archon battles of our time. Reporting from Hub City, this is the most official Vault Battle fan club in all the Crucible. I'm your host, Raymond Darko. I've got a joke for you. Why did the giant chieftain cross the road? To call a champion's ring with your car. And he won. Sorry, Ambermobile Insurance doesn't cover giant encounters. Now for this week's report. In Iron Beta, we have two NKFL newcomers face off. ABR member Rise and YouTube star Amber Medes. Unfortunately, Amber Medes couldn't get a hold this round, losing 3-0 to Rise's five-set spanning lineup. Better luck next time, Amber Medes. In Bronze Alpha, Kalos and Beehawk had an intense battle in which Beehawk got the upper hand after executing a back-breaking turn with Gluttony and Envy, capturing all of Kalos' Amber and moving all the Amber from Beehawk's creatures to his pool. In Silver Gamma, Anthony Boygod and Boomer Ang's Game 1 ends with a spectacular battlefield containing all the horsemen and a magnificent line of artifacts. For Game 2, they used a non-standard password, eluding my surveillance. I'd say these Archons have a high guile stat. That's all for now. Tune in next time for more Vault Battle action. Welcome to Vault Heads, the show where we chronicle the great vault battles of our time. Reporting from Hub City, this is the most official Vault Battle fan club in all the Crucible. I'm your host, Raymond Darko. Now for this week's report. In Iron Delta, Sith of Angmar made a last ditch attempt at saving a game by hypnotizing a damaged anguish, taking his opponent Lesto off check and going up to 10 Amber himself. However, Lesto had another devastating turn in store, breaking the hypnosis destroying a brabble, and purging Amber with Infernus to take the victory over Sith of Angmar. In Bronze Beta, Ladon 7 had a beautiful turn, in which two Logos creatures entered play ready thanks to a Fandangle, and they promptly stole with Dimension Door. After their 0-3 defeat to Ladon 7, Southerly Elf played another match that same day, this time winning all three games. It's surely an exciting road ahead for this majority Age of Ascension Hexad. In Diamond Division, Cavell takes two games versus the Season 18 champion Lorenzo in some incredibly grindy games, totaling over 40 turns across the two games. Also in Diamond, not tonight, after trading wins in the first two games with Kristoff, was able to crush Kristoff's progress in Game 3 with a universal key lock, and then assembled a Hayden Oswin Voltron, keeping it for the remainder of the game, and even reaping for 5 Amber in her final turn for a massive overkill, forging her third key with 8 Amber remaining. That's all for this week. Tune in next time for more Vault Battle action. Welcome to Vault Heads, the show where we chronicle the great vault battles of our time. I'm your host, Raymond Darko, and I'm reporting from Hub City, and that makes this the most official vault battle fan club in all the Crucible. Now, let's get to this week's report. In Silver Alpha, Gary Garnofsky was able to keep Time Shaper's author Aurora at bay for a game, using his M4 Captura to take Aurora off check with a draw bonus, gaining two Amber from an Enhanced Access Denied and one Amber from Commander Jerkar's ability, and finally sealing the game by fighting a Key Frog before it was able to be used by Aurora. Undeterred, Aurora took command of games two and three, using an array of Sanctum Burst cards for shocking value, gaining five Amber from Glorious Few, six Amber from Cleansing Wave, and four Amber from Free Markets. In Iron Delta, we visit Sith of Angmar once again, 
this time up against Ismalelo. Sith's entire Amber Pool is deleted when a Gargantadon was sacrificed to a power of fire for a loss of eight Amber. However, Sith was able to line up a perfect Brig combo, having 20 Amber after his opponent forged their first key, which proved to be an insurmountable lead for Ismalelo to overcome. In the Diamond Division, I witnessed the Round 3 battle between Dick Rowland and Kveld. In Game 1, Dick Rowland got Book of LEQ out very early, but unfortunately revealed a Star Alliance card and lost their turn. With their Star Alliance creatures on the board exhausted, Kveld took the chance to forge a key and then half Dick Rowland's Amber total with Effervescent Principle. Then, before the board was able to be used, they were destroyed by Group Think Tank! Despite all of these setbacks, Dick Rowland persisted and won the game. In Game 2, Kveld shows again his impressive ability to stay in a game longer than you would think is possible. With Dick Rowland having forged two keys and holding 12 amber for his third, Kveld, despite having zero keys and zero amber, was able to stay in the game for another 10 turns and forge a key. If not for a Collector Worm landing in time to fight off a Senator Brachus with a loaded Deosilus on the board, the result could very well have been different. In Game 3, Kveld was simply unable to withstand the onslaught of Dick Rowland's World Collide monster. A fascinating Logos Saurian Shadows deck with 13 creatures with play effects, including 3 Ronnie Risk Locks. That's all for this week. Tune in next time for more Vault Battle action. Welcome to Vault Heads, the show where we chronicle the great Vault Battles of our time. Reporting from Hub City, this is the most official Vault Battle fan club in all the Crucible. I'm your host, Raymond Darko. In the Iron Alpha Division, David Papayani brings calamity to the Sari Republic. A fight from Spartasaur. Saurus Rex reaps and searches for exile. Odoak fights and returns in Amber. Crassosaurus is played, capturing seven Amber from the opponent. Exile Crassosaurus. And finally, a regrettable meteor to destroy the rare trio in an instant. In the Silver Beta Division, God executed the second Incredible Worlds Collide Saurian combo to be featured this week. Leading with Senator Shrix and Exalting, they tribute three Amber from the opponent's Amber Pool onto Shrix, as it's the only creature in the battle line. Next, a favor of Rex to use Shrix's effect to Exalt again. Two more creatures. They double Failing Strike to Exalt their Odoak. Then, they drop three more creatures for good measure, and finish off the turn by forging their second key with Imperial Forge. In the Diamonds Division, Lorenzo shows his spirit is of the wilds, repeatedly using his untamed house to extract untold amounts of amber. After having already gained 12 amber from untamed, Lorenzo used Arise to set up a final devastating burst. Playing two hunting witches under a full moon, followed by three more creatures, Lorenzo gained 12 Amber without playing a single Amber bonus. That's all for this week. Tune in next time for more Vault Battle action. Welcome to Vault Heads, hosted from the Hub City Vault Battle Fan Club. I'm your host, Raymond Darko. We follow the great Vault Battles of our time. In the Diamonds Division, Kristoff managed to assemble three EEs in his battle line. In one turn, they discarded a Harbinger of Doom and a Misery exploits, each triggering a wave of purging. Later that game, Kristoff played two EEs once again, stole four Amber, and finished the game right there with Obsidian Forge. Kristoff didn't relent in games two and three. He finished the match with a dis fatality using a rise to bring back Schuler and Drumble, bringing his opponent down to zero Amber and jumping to nine Amber himself. In Iron Gamma, I witnessed a battle of warring dinosaurs and cunning gambling. 
The F Raider called check for their second key with 10 Amber. Their opponents, Alvad, had an interdimensional graft waiting for this moment and sprung their trap. BF Raider, however, cleverly used the gambling den to dampen Alvad's gains by naming the wrong house and losing two amber before forging and transferring the remaining amber to Alvad. After forging, Raider imposed his Saurian defenses, capturing four amber with tribute onto a Grim Locust Ducks upgraded with Imperial Scutum. Alvad still had fight on them, though. They immediately played five untamed cards, followed by Punctuated Equilibrium, which discarded six Semper Tyrannosaurus from their opponent's hand, stopping them from truly capitalizing on the captured Amber. Even without the combo, BF Raider pushed for check on their third key. Alvad responded by playing their own tributes and destroying the opponent's creatures. This left BF Raider two Amber short of forging, which they managed to gain at the start of their turn with Gambling Den for the exact win. That's all for this week. Tune in next time for more Vault Battle action. Welcome to Vault Heads! I'm your host, Raymond Darko. Hosted from the Hub City Vault Battle Fan Club, we bring you the greatest vault battles of our time. In Iron Gamma, Alvad and Rogue Ursa had a fun match. Alvad started the match off with fireworks, making a groundbreaking discovery to take a definitive advantage in the last lap. Rogue Ursa had some fun on their way to victory in Game 2, brawling with a trio of powered-up rad pennies. In Game 3, Rogue Ursa was caught in Alvad's trap, who had interdimensional graph waiting for the moment their amber-stacked daughter was destroyed. In the end, Alvad's amber total was halved by effervescent principle, but was still able to forge his third key with the three amber on Senator Shrix. In Silver Gamma, yours truly and God happened upon a gigantic matchup. Ultra Gravitron in one deck, Niffle Kong in the other. It just so happened that the gigantic creatures didn't meet on the battlefield, as the fight turned into a dis showdown. Each player had a haymaker of a turn. First, yours truly locked God into a do-nothing untamed turn, with Mark of Dis, and followed up with another two discards, including Infernus. But God had his own dis turn in store, clearing the board with a gateway to dis, and playing an Infernus of his own. God turned out to be the champion of Dis that day, finishing the match with a Dis fatality, getting a one-sided board wipe due to complete ward coverage on their creatures. That's all for this week. Tune in next time for the last episode of the season. Welcome to Fall Heads, the show where we chronicle the great fall battles of our time. Hosted from the Hub City Vault Battle Fan Club, I'm your host, Raymond Darko. In Iron Alpha, Bot or Not put on an amazing show. In one game, they took the win on the back of the great, unfathomable beast, Omnipus. Calling the same house five times in a row and reaping with the fearsome creature for 15 amber in total. While that game was a straight shot from beginning to end, the next game took a number of twists and turns before the first key was forged. Bot or Nods played Universal Key Lock early to slow the game down, and both players were determined to not be the one to break it. Kidu got a great start with a Board of Sins, and stole Bot or Nods 4 Amber with the Envy Gluttony combo but then stopped themselves from forging with the tax from Desire. Could you fight your way back from this with no board wipe? Well, but or not can. They put Discombobulator and Wild Spirits on an enemy creature, which ensured their combo would go off. Surely enough, they went supernova, playing a huge turn combining United Action and Punctuated Equilibrium. After some more clever plays, like combining the effects of Thorium Plasmates and Mini Group Think Tank to damage and destroy some sins, they took control of the board 
and used their imprinted Murmooks to take the lead, eventually leading to a win. In Iron Beta, Rise put on a masterclass of untamed bursting. Even though Rise's opponent, Anbert, stole three Amber by hitting his strange ordination with mind fire, his Chelonias quickly made up the difference and more. To finish the match, Rise showed that the first set, Call of the Archons, is a force to be reckoned with, combining Nature's Call, Dust Pixies, and Witch of the Eye for an incredible 14 Amber in one turn. And that's all for this season of Vault Heads! I hope you enjoyed all the fantastic combos and gameplay that the Nordic Keyforge League has to offer.